Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is Dana. And today we are going to, I'm just getting my camera fixed here in the right spot. Excuse my dirty mat. Today we are going to work on this Christmas junk journal and that I have started. I posted, a lot of you saw the picture I posted of my cover. And um, today I want to finish the cover and I want to stitch, I'm ready to stitch my signature in. So what we're going to do is finish this up. I just want to get my little mark on my mat so I know where I'm at. So I'm in frame for you here. So what I have done is I have used and most of my single signature um, junk journals. Um, I use a nine just a nine by twelve envelope um now you can get these at dollar tree they come in a six pack for only a dollar and this it's just this regular envelope here okay and what i have done is i take the metal clasp off that just pulls right off and then um i glue this flap down and then this becomes a really nice base for a cover of a junk journal. Or any journal, it doesn't have to be a junk journal, um, but it's a really nice base. Now what I have discovered, a little tip that I have to share that I find I like, um, the first couple that I made like this, I um, just glued this flap down, you know, folded it in half and just went from there. But what I found was because the inside of the envelope was not glued together, you get this kind of bubbling because there's air in there. So it doesn't lay quite flat inside the journal. So um, now this one I quilted so that wasn't an issue. But f normally what I do is I just take um, my art glitter glue or any kind of it, whatever your favorite adhesive is, and I just kind of, you know, squirt it in here, just kind of willy-nilly, and then I glue that down together before I close my flap. That way everything is nice and flat as you're working with it. And I find that I like that better. Some people may like the, just the kind of effect and texture that it has with the air in there. So what I've done and for this cover is I took my envelope, glued the flap down, and then I glued a layer. Let me see if you can, you're not gonna be able to see it. Barely, okay? I glued a layer of fusible fleece to, um, to my folder, then used the glue side of the fusible fleece to adhere my fabric down, and then I just took it to my sewing machine and I quilted it. I wasn't, I really wanted the quilted look and I was kind of questioning whether, um, it was going to be too busy with the plaid, but I ended up really loving how it turned out. And then I just sewed the image that I knew. This is just coffee stained cheesecloth and a couple of little bling pieces. And then I sewed, you can see that I sewed that down here. So that's where we're at. And I've already chosen this paper here that I want on the inside front cover of my journal. So what we need to do is we need to prepare the edges here. So what I have here is I'm using Fabri-Tac because we're gonna tack this material down. And the first thing I wanna do is kind of clip my corners a little bit. I've been itching to get this project finished and I've been, I was supposed to put up this video, um, record this video earlier this week, but I tell you every single day something 
came up that just kind of kept me from being able to do it. So I'm just clipping these, not all the way to the corner. You wanna leave some space so that your corner is covered. So not all the way to the envelope, just like you would paper. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run my Fabri-Tac, which is getting fairly low and goopy. Ugh. So I'm going to run my Fabri-Tac along the edge. I'm not putting it on the fabric, but putting it on the envelope itself. And then we're just gonna lay that fabric down into the glue. Just like that. I tell you, I really love the Fabri-Tac and it works so well. Okay, now we're gonna do this side. I'm gonna actually, I think I'll do both long sides first. I need a new bottle. Every time I go to Walmart or wherever they sell it, I always forget to pick up a bottle and it really, I hate that <laughs> because I really need a new one. <laughs> okay, so now we'll just fold this over and I'm just kind of pulling at the edge a little bit so that it lays nice and flat. And this is a fairly thin material, so it's doing really well. All right, now let's see how this is gonna do for us here on the corners. Let me see. Mm, I'm gonna wanna tack those corners down just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, it's getting goopy. I'm not gonna do is just, I'm gonna stick some glue right in here inside this little kind of pocket that happens when you miter and fold over. And what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna pull that in just a little, see that? And pull that in and hold it on both corners here. I know you can't see the other one because I'm out of frame. Let me move this up so you can see it. So I did that on both, so I just, tucked some glue in there and I just kind of folded it over a little. That way when we fold this over, it lays nice and flat and we don't have that pointy corner poking out. Okay, so now I'm gonna run my glue. Come on, there we go. My dogs see a lizard out the window, the patio window here, they're growling at it. <laughs> okay, there we go, that's nice. Now we have a nice corner. And these are sticking up a little, I'm not worried about that because our paper is gonna cover that up. Okay, so that's what we have. Nice there, let's do the other side. So let's get our glue kind of in, in these little corners here, just like we did before. I get my paper out of the way here. And then we're just gonna kind of fold them over and pen, just kind of pinch them over and hold that for just a minute. And now we'll glue this down. Oh gosh, am I gonna have enough to finish? I hope so. There we go. All right. Now we'll just pull this over. Getting our corners nice and straight. Fold it over nicely. Pull that down. Okay, and that's what we have. 
Now we've got our nice edges. Okay, so this is what we have. So now, see all of this kind of edge will be covered up by this paper, which we're gonna glue down now. But first what I wanna do is take my distress ink to the edges of the paper and I'll tell you why. It is black, you're thinking, oh, that's not really gonna show up, and it isn't. But if you look at your paper from the side, this is a white core paper, okay? So I don't want this white edge showing. So I wanna hide that. So the way I do that is I just put Distress Ink, so I'll show you the difference. If I put Distress Ink on just part of it, you can see that that white edge is hidden. I, I've got some, what is this? Sugar, that's enough. Hi Andrew, I'm recording. So if I put um, the Distress Ink on the edge, you can see that it hides the white core, the middle of the, um, see how you can see it here, but not here. I don't want that white edge showing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run Distress Ink around the side of this. Because I just think that it, for me, it kind of ruins the look of it to have that, because I don't have really any white in the journal at all. So I don't want that white edge showing. So we'll just hide that real quick with some ink. And then because the paper is going to be laid over the edge of the fabric here, I will use my Fabri-Tac instead of my art glitter glue to glue this paper into the inside cover. Last little bit. Okay, now that just is one of those details that probably only I will notice, but that's okay. All right, so this is gonna fit in here just like this. So let's get our glue and hopefully I have enough Fabri-Tac to finish this part, because it's the last part that I need Fabri-Tac for. I've got all this gunk on the tip. Ugh. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is just cover this entire sheet, going as close to the edges as I can with my glue. and then just running it all over. And for me, I don't really think that you can overkill this. You wanna make sure that it stays down really well. Okay, now. I want to make sure that my cover is the right way up and because my paper is directional that it is the right way up because you don't want to mess that up. Ask me how I know. All right, now kind of eyeballing my border edge, I want to center that so that I have about the same amount of fabric showing all the way around. Oh, that looks so nice next to the plaid. And then I'm just gonna smooth it out and spread that glue out underneath. Making sure that my edges are pressed down really well. All right. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, now while this is setting up and drying, I wanna show you um, what I've done for the signature. I used um, an Artie Mays um, kit, digital kit. We're gonna set this aside to dry. 
and pull in our signature here. I've used the Artie Mays kit um, called Cardinal Rose. And I love this. This is just so beautiful. Um, you know, it's not, for me, it's not your normal average kind of Christmas kit. Um, it's, it's more vintage looking. It's more poinsettias and cardinals and holly instead of, you know, snowflakes and snowmen and things like that. And that was the kind of feel that I was going for with this. So, um, this was just beautiful. So what I've done is in a dish, I've printed, I got the digital kit plus I got the add on ephemera kit. Um, so I have lots of little pieces that I'm going to be adding in here, but I'll just show you what I've done to the signature first. So I have, um, her digital paper. Um, this was, um, part of the ephemera. I've got a December page, um, from, uh, Edith Holden. This is a, in the, um, is this a, no, this is, uh, this paper kit that I have kind of off to the side here. I don't know if it, can you see that in the frame? Yeah, all of this paper here is um, North Pole Gazette um, that was at Hobby Lobby, uh, not Hobby Lobby, Michael's last year um, in their Christmas collection. And I felt like that was the papers that I had that complemented this the most. So that's a page from that, that I've put some crocheted lace on the edge. And then on the back of that is green masking um, paper that you can get at Lowe's in the painting section. And I have coffee dyed paper. These pockets were part of the kit. Um, now, I'm, I am going to cut these down. I'm going to do more to these. I went through last night and I started tucking things into pockets because um, I had glued in all my pockets. So I started tucking things into pockets even though they weren't decorated because I wanted to make sure I knew where everything was going. So so even though these are in here, um, I plan on doing more to them. So they're just kind of holding a place is what they're doing. So I have some beautiful coffee dyed paper here. This is gorgeous. Love how that turned out. And let's see, another um, paper from the kit, and I did print them double-sided. She has some wonderful journaling pages in that kit, and I just stitched some black lace onto the edge. This is from a Hobby Lobby paper pad from last Christmas. I think it was called Plaid Tidings. Um, and what I did with these was I didn't want the white background uh, because they are single sided. So what I did with a couple of these was I, I made them pockets. I stitched coffee dye paper onto the back. If I pull this out, you can see the entire sheet. So this was the sheet. I punched thumb holes on either end and then I stitched coffee dyed paper on the top and bottom and folded it in half. So I've got full page pockets here um, on this, on this one. Um, and I plan on making, I just have some book page here. I have little notes. I went through the whole journal last night. Um, large tags or cards for the page size pockets. So I have a book that those pages are going to be the perfect size. So I'm going to double these up and we'll do that in the next video. We'll, um, I'm going to double these up and um, make them as inserts for these full page pockets. Okay, more paper from the kit. Again, double sided, just some beautiful um, uh, journaling paper. More coffee dyed paper. My daughter played with doilies on this. She did these herself and I just think they were beautiful in here. Okay, here's another um, of the plaid. This is just a placeholder, another ephemera piece from the kit. Um, this one, I had I put three um, plaid papers in here because I thought the plaid just looked really pretty with the kit. I really like that look. Um, so I did the, um, the sideways pocket on one plaid. I did a top loading pocket on another. So on the third one, I didn't do anything. I just, literally sewed, glued and sewed a piece of coffee dye paper to the back of it. That's all I did, just to kind of hide that white. And I just, I like that stitch look. Um, I don't think it's a waste of paper at all. I love how it looks, so. 
Okay, so that goes back in there for further decorating. Another page from the kit that I sewed some pretty trim onto the edge. Um, the beautiful background on there. This is coffee dyed composition notebook paper. Um, and here's that, um, um, this was a pocket from the kit that kind of wraps around the page like this. And um, let me take this out. So this is the other plaid one that I did where I punched two thumb holes here and I sewed up the middle. And I only did that because I wanted to be able to center my thumb holes. So in centering my thumb holes here, then I sewed down the, I sent, sewed down the middle, centered the thumb holes, and then I stitched on three sides so that I have now two top loading pockets. And then on top of that, I added those other pockets um, that she had in the kit. So all kinds of places in here to load stuff in. So I really love that, I think that looks nice. So that's the other side of that. Then I have some notebook paper here that's been coffee dyed. Um, some more of that painter's masking paper from Lowe's, this time in the brown. And then I had um, um, a little Christmas music play, uh, page with jingle bells that I sewed some lace onto the edge. Um, that's really cute. The only thing I didn't like was there's th <laughs> three blind mice on the other side. <laughs> so we're, <laughs> we're gonna cover this up. <laughs> So that didn't really go with the journal, but we'll figure out what to do there. Um, then I have a paper bag here in, a set, in the signature. Um, here's the middle. More paper from the digital kit, the other side of the bag. And I won't do anything with this side. I don't care that it says three to behind mice. I just, this part totally didn't go. So I'll leave this page. Um, Here's the other side of the Jingle Bells with more crocheted lace, masking paper, notebook paper, um, another that wrap around pocket here. Um, these things, like I said, still need further decoration. So there's still quite a bit to do here. Here's the coffee dyed composition paper. Isn't that pretty? Let me pull this up so you guys can see it. I just love the wrinkles that just I mean, when you when I dipped it into the coffee and just laid it on the cookie sheet, this is how it laid down. And, um, you know, there were puckers in it and stuff. And boy, that, did that just turn out gorgeous. Love it. And then more prints with lace, the coffee dyed with the doilies, the other pages from the kit. Here's the other side loading pocket. Okay, and the trim on that edge, more coffee dye paper, pockets and tags, Edith Holden, and then the other side of the cover. So what we're going to do now is let's check on our cover because I wanna sew the signature in, and then that'll be the end of this video. So we're gonna gently, gently kind of fold this in half. I don't, I want to make sure nothing buckles. Oh, wow. That's the first time I'm going to trim this some. Oh, that turned out so pretty. I really love that. And everything looks like it's together nicely. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is prepare to sew in my um, signature. I'm just gonna grab some clips here real quick. I need four binder clips. There we go. Okay, now there's lots of different ways to sew in a signature. Okay, I think everybody has their own preferred method. Um, so this is just mine. So if you've seen it done differently on another channel um, and you like that way better, then go for it. This is just how I do it and what is comfortable for me. So what I have here is I have a template. I save this. This is my one signature um, kind of um, nine by six journal template. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just um, cut a piece of cardstock, folded it in half, 
so I have the center. Fold it in half again, so I have that center. I punched a hole in the center where the score lines meet here. And then I came in one inch from each edge. I'm shaking, I've got the shakes this morning. Does that ever happen to you when you're crafting? Um, so one inch from each edge, and then I punched that hole. So we're just gonna sew in with a pamphlet stitch. Okay, so what I do first is poke the holes in my cover. So I'm gonna lay this into my crease of my journal cover lining up to where I've got the same amount of space on each end. Just kind of eyeballing it. It's not a big deal if you're a little bit off. And then once I have it lined up, I'm gonna take my pokey tool and I'm just gonna poke a hole right where the holes of my template are. Being careful not to hit your fingers. Make sure I'm lined up here, okay, and that one. Okay, and then what I do, especially when I have fabric, I come back in on the other side and make sure that my hole is visible because we're gonna be putting a needle through that. So I wanna make sure that I can see it. I can't see that one, so that's why I do that make sure that I can see it here because the fabric will kind of the weave will close in on itself a little bit and then here's the other one I'll kind of poke that in there all right so our cover holes are done so I'm going to set this aside and we're going to work on we're going to work on this now Along with this, I have an envelope. Let me see if I can find it. Where is it? This is my little bin that I'm keeping my little bits and pieces in. Okay, where is my little envelope? I had an envelope that I wanted to sew into the cover. These are just some ephemera pieces that I've done. Oh, here it is. This is, this is it. I wanted to sew into the center of the signature. Um, so basically what will happen is, is this will, I will sew along here before I close the envelope up and this will float into the center of the signature. So that needs to be added in. So what I'm gonna do first before I clip anything is I wanna make sure that my non full size pieces are sitting where I want them to sit. See, this is not centered. And it's no big deal if it's not, but I wanna make sure that it's sitting at least close to where I would really like it. Okay, that one's okay. So we're just gonna flip through here. This one needs to push over just a tad. one won't move for some reason. Let's see why. Okay, there we go. Being sloppy this morning. Oh, I've got the shakes this morning. Ah. Move this over just a tad. And then especially like my, see these little short pages. I've got a couple little short pages. The bigger pages aren't so much of a big deal, but I want my composition book page and my paper bag to be sitting in the right place. Okay, there we go. For that, lay that down. And this one too, that needs to be moved over a little. There we go. So I just want to make sure things are just sitting where I want them to as much as possible, you know. And that looks pretty good there. And then we are at the middle. Okay. So 
So what I'm going to do is pick this whole thing up. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm pressing the spine down together. Can you see that? I'm just kind of pressing it in and I'm not laying it flat. It will not sit right if you lay it flat. So as I'm kind of curving it up like that, I'm pressing it together and this is how I'm going to clip it. So now I'm going to add clips. So that it all holds together. Turn this around. Again, before I do the other side, I'm going to kind of open and make sure everything is pressed down as much as possible. Add my clips. Okay. Now that everything is pressed in, I'm going to save this. Okay, we'll, do, we'll address that in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my template. Now this will go edge to edge. The template will go edge to edge on the page. So there's just, I mean, it's super easy to line that up. And I'm going to, with firm pressure and straight down, I'm going to punch through all of the pages. Okay, see that? So that's the middle. I'm going to come over here and do the side with firm pressure going through all the layers of paper. And it doesn't look like it'd be strong enough to go through, but it's just paper. So if your pokey tool is sharp enough, it will go through. So I'm gonna turn this around, line that back up edge to edge, kind of hold it in a V, and press through all those layers. There we go. Okay. So there we have it. You can see our holes on the spine there. Okay, so this is not going to reach the holes. See that? The envelope is shorter. So I just want the middle mark. So I'm just gonna line this up between the holes, making sure it's as even as possible. It's not a big deal if it's not. And then I'm just gonna punch through the back side here so I can get my center hole for my envelope. Okay, I'm done with my pokey tool because this is gonna sew in like this so that I have this floating envelope in the middle. All right, so let's set that aside. Let's talk about thread, how we're gonna sew this in. What I have here is just regular embroidery floss. That's what I use. I've not had a problem with it breaking and 